way. This poem I wrote in 1989. It was about five years into this perfect storm that keeps on giving. You still hear me okay? Yeah? Okay. Um, la, 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 la. And it is about my experience with the healing journey, this healing journey that we're all on. And it's called, Have You Tried Chiropractic? I used to think I had a little knowledge about healing, just enough to judge myself and judge others. But now I know that I really don't know. I used to think if I could only discover the thought or the repressed emotion that's created this pain, if I only could understand its spiritual dimension and timing, maybe then I could heal, then I could be freed of pain. So I thought and I thought, I dug and I dug a true archaeological dig into this lifetime and those past, uncovering and uncovering layer upon layer, metaphor upon metaphor. Sometimes the pain eased, sometimes it got worse, and sometimes it just stayed the same. I swim, I walk, I do yoga and qigong. At one time, I even did a particular exercise 35 times an hour. That's 570 repetitions a day. I've done acupuncture, massage, Alexander Technique and Feldenkrais, osteopathy, homeopathy, chiropractic and allopathy, psychic reading, psychic healings and psychic surgery, body electronics, bioenergetics and biofeedback. I've used TENS, microcurrent and dolphin mind machines, bio circuits, North Pole magnets, and sound and light machines. I've taken vitamins, magic flower drops from England, blue green algae from Oregon, little brown pills from China, gold pills, real gold pills from India, antioxidants from Hawaii to reduce my free radicals, aspirin, acetaminophen, and anti inflammatories, and a tiny antidepressant that works on the tiny little pain receptors in my brain. I've taken pills that relax my muscles and pills that claim to relax but made them tight. Lately, I've even taken to drinking hydrogen peroxide. I'm really a blonde on the inside. I've shot Novocaine into my neck right here really scary long needle, and ozone into my veins, put oil up my nose and coffee up my rear. I've been covered in oil and baked in a steam box, wrapped in herbs and baked in the sun, covered in chickpea flour and rice uh, and sandalwood powder, and rubbed down with milk and rice and clarified butter. And please, don't even ask how I've changed my diet. I've drawn pictures, done visualizations, and talked to my muscles. I've gone on shamanic journeys to the upper world where I've had worms pulled out of my neck and my head cut off several times. The spirits really want me to lose my head. I've employed my inner healer and worked her over time. Oh, surely something must be healing. I've tried sex. I've tried no sex, opening my heart, closing my heart. I've sung, I've chanted, I've moaned, and I've groaned. I've kept still as a mouse, and I've thrashed about. And you guessed it, sometimes the pain eased, sometimes it got worse, and sometimes it stayed the same. The list goes on for the month, from the mundane to the bizarre as I follow the path of my own inner guidance. It's been such a dance of surrender, resist, surrender, resist. Somebody once told me that my illness was like the canary in the coal mine. For as I feel the burning in my body, I feel the burning in the earth. And in all her people, fires of anguish, 
fires of purification, fires of transformation. It's not just my body that calls for healing. There are months when I feel much better, when it seems like the end is in sight. And I ask, was it the drugs or the prayer, my perseverance or factor X? And as I dance with the pain and the pain dances with me, am I the victim or the victor or perhaps neither one? And just when I think it's all over, this dance takes another turn, causing me to turn once again to that power greater than myself, yet of myself. As I listen inside, as the years march on, I hear, how can I heal my back becoming? How can I heal my life? Probing deeper and deeper into life's mysteries, I find the big questions and the skill to live without answers. More and more, I exist within paradox, grateful for the inner smile that keeps me laughing as I stumble towards the light. But not all questions resolve in paradox. There are some things I do know. I know I love the ocean the sound of water running, lying in the sun and walking all day in the arboretum. I know I love people and plants and all living creatures, especially those magnificent beings called cats. I know that it doesn't take romance to have love in my life or sex to be deeply touched, though I wouldn't complain. I know I love my friends, for it is they who have had the courage to be with me. As I journeyed in and out of the depths of my despair, sitting so lovingly on the other end of the phone, often my sole lifeline to sanity, holding the life for me, the light for me, as I ranted and raved and spoke of suicide. With their help, I open my heart to the pain, thus opening my heart to myself. Making room for the pain as it is, I make room for myself as I am, and discovering that suffering is a choice, and so is happiness. After all, freedom is not necessarily the absence of pain. Thus, I find heaven in the center of hell. I find that what I've called my illness is actually sensations to which I have assigned meaning, as if I knew what an illness was, as if I knew what a body is, as if I knew what anything is. I no longer pretend to understand anything, for it seems that what I do makes all the difference, and it seems that what I do makes no difference at all. All I do know is that the deepest healing available to all of us is learning to accept the unacceptable and embrace the unembraceable with love, with mercy, and with compassion. And in the end, if this pain should ever cease, I know that I will be no more or less a hero, for the true victory is coming to realize that I don't have an illness at all. I have this precious moment of life. Thank you for just breathing with me. I have to now do a, some technical moving around for the next part. And I have my friend Deepam, who has lived with me and taken care of me for a zillion years here to help me. So. Well, whilst you do that, um, I would like to take a little moment to thank all of the contributors who have 
worked so hard. The amount of rehearsals, new versions we've had, people developing things, ditching one thing, doing another, writing their own stuff, pulling slideshows together. Um, people have really committed to the process and we've been blown away, absolutely blown away by what people have done, what people have achieved the beauty and the sound and the quality and it's just been absolutely magical so thank you to everybody for showing up and for inspiring people and we will um hopefully have the video on simplero um and people will see it into the future and hopefully people will see everybody living their values um and now you're going to see somebody who really has been living their values now. And Davida, can I just check that you're going to let us see your fingers on the keyboard? Yes. Uh, don't let me play without those, okay? I think I've got it in the right place. But, uh, yeah. That's, that's better. But I don't my, want my head cut off. No. Okay. So, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, so before I lose the mic, because it's going to give feedback, I just want to say that in the summer of 1983, I was studying at the Aspen Music Festival, and I remember it came to me that music and playing the piano was going to be my path to enlightenment this lifetime. However, little did I know that it would be the pain from playing the piano that was going to thrust me on this remarkable, excruciating, and ultimately rewarding journey that has brought me to this community. When I started the pilot program in December 2020 with Dr. Cat, playing the piano again after, at that point it was 35 years, was nowhere on my radar. I had let go of it. I'd sold my piano. I'd given away my music years and years ago. And I just had let go of it. But you know, this journey we're on and, and discovering our values and what gives us joy. And it, I realized I had to play again. Uh, there have been a lot of ups and downs on the path to playing again. The moment I said yes, my body said no. You know how that goes. And I had a lot of boulders to work through. But finally, about six months ago, I had this friend who had produced concerts for me and my mom. I used to perform with my mom. And she said, please, let me do a GoFundMe campaign for you. Let's get you a piano again. And... At finally, at that point, every time I started working on creating the video for the GoFundMe campaign, I started to feel better and better. I mean, that is the magic of rewiring and looking at those inner conflicts and doing those divine neutrality processes up the wazoo, if that's what it takes. So... Thanks to, oh, and just another thing. When I, um, I realized today that I didn't think of creating this variety show just for everybody else in this community and to showcase all your amazing talent. I knew that for me to play again after 37 years, it was gonna take a village. And that's what I've gotten with just such grace, synchronicity, serendipity, all those good things. 156 donations came in, many of them from this community. All the first ones were from this community. Thank you so much. And um, now learning to play the piano again, it's, it's kind of like being a baby learning to walk. It's frustrating. It's annoying. It's awkward. I feel so awkward playing this piano. But you know what? It's also magical and it's fun. And when I started, I've had this piano for three weeks, just three weeks. It arrived on a day there was supposed to be a cyclone hitting our island, but it didn't. 
And um, every time I play, there's less and less pain in my arms and hands. It keeps getting better and better. How is that possible? Well, I think we all know the work we're doing here. So let me unveil this magnificent instrument. It's a Dexy Bell Vivo S9, handmade in Italy. And now I'm going to fumble my way with some other technical settings. So just bear with me. I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm going to turn on the piano sound. Thank you. So, um, Dr. Katz going to jump in as soon as Davida's finished with her piece now. So, uh, take it away. We can hear, yes, it's good.
Thank you so much, Davida, for sharing that with us. Here's, here's Dr. Kat. Wow. Um, this was unbelievable. And Davida, thank you for the inspiration that you brought to bringing this to the community. Several months ago, she came to me and said, Dr. Kat, this is what I want to do. I want to have a, a talent show, a variety show, and you don't have to do anything. You just need to show up. So <laughs> thank you. I cannot tell you what this experience has been like for me. I'm like, this is why we're doing everything. Like this right here is the living of primal trust, where I got to get to know all of you who shared today who you really are. I mean, we're here and we're doing all this rewiring work, but we got to see a little bit more of who we really are. The talent in this community is outrageous. And what I love is that each and every one of you have been on a journey to do what Davida just said, which is to accept the unacceptable and to live your values anyway. And that is the medicine, you know, the, the list of medicines that Davida just talked about, the pills, the programs, etc. you know, those are never mistake those things for the medicine. It is embracing what we have been given in this moment and saying, what do I love to do? And I cannot tell you how beautiful um, to see the transformation before my eyes of so many of you today who performed that I never, like two years ago when I met many of you, this is mind blowing. This is a community of transformation. And we are, we are making waves through the rewiring community and, and this is how we transform. We find our values, we find what we love and we do it anyway. So thank you everyone that worked so hard to put this together. I mean, it's unreal what you guys have done. Dovita and Steve and Marianne and all the people behind the scenes, Alina, oh my gosh, producing all this. Thank you so much. All of you who took the time to, to put something together and to be seen, like really seen uh, in all the different types of talents and values. That's what also was amazing. We showcased that a value, a talent is engaging with our pets. It's, it's, it's expressing on paper whatever is up for us in the moment. And yes, and sometimes it's beautiful artwork and photography, but it's all of these things and we all have them inside of us. I think every one of us can come away from this and say, oh, I do have talent. I've got something inside of me that's worthy of sharing, even though I feel like whatever you've showcased that it is, we are all worthy to be seen and we have something to contribute right here and right now in this. I have something to contribute right here, right now in this. That's our new mantra. Um, so thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everyone who's been hosting and helping us along today. And I love all of you who showed up. I mean, gosh, we're almost four hours and the community has been very engaged. I know I literally could just keep watching my heart. Like I am so full right now. I've been crying and it's been wonderful. So I will cut it short now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.